Episode 37 of the Interpretation Station is called to order. Welcome everybody to this, uh, I think it's the first episode of the Interpretation Station in springtime. Outside, the sun is shining, the birds are twittering away here in Geneva, just outside Geneva. Um, yes, it's a lovely spring day, and uh, what better way to kick off the spring than with an episode of the Interpretation Station in the Wham Bam Thank You Roland format, obviously. Now, we've got something, uh, it's a bit different today, uh, uh, the text that we're working from, because it's actually by an NGO. Uh, it's, I think we've pretty much done all countries up to this point. But as I say, this one's actually by an NGO. This was from uh, the 3rd of March from the Human Rights Council. Uh, it's by, uh, so it, from Spanish into English. Uh, this, the NGO is called the Peace Brigades International. And uh, they were speaking under uh, item three. It was an interactive dialogue with the special rapporteur on uh, human rights defenders. Presentation of the report of the special rapporteur on uh, human rights defenders. But who, you, as you'll see, um, we often, they, you often start to hear now the, uh, this uh, acronym that they use for human rights defenders, HRDs. Okay, uh, without uh, further ado, off I go into the corner of the screen and uh, put the uh, text up and let's get started. Um, so here at the very start, okay, so it's a pretty grim text to be honest. Um, it's all about, you know, human rights activists, defenders, being murdered uh, in Latin America. Um, so, yeah, they use the word assassinato uh, quite a few times. And to be honest, I'm never entirely certain what the best solution for assassinato is. That's why I've just started out by giving you these, you know, the three obvious words, murder, killing, assassination. And to be honest, I tend to sort of cycle through them because, as I say, I never find one. When I think of assassination, for example, I don't know, I always think of, top political figures, I think of JFK or whatever. Um, and, but I suppose these NGO, these human rights folk getting killed, I guess, you know, they are being assassinated as well. So anyway, just for my own peace of mind, as it were, I, I tend to sort of cycle through the three of them. Uh, okay, so getting started. So saludan la presentación del informe. Again, just a basic word here, but it's very important to get right. We commend the report, or so you could have, we, we applaud the report or the presentation, whatever. It's always just important to get, get off to a, to a good start. By the way, one thing I would say um, in this context here, Senora Presidente, now this is a context that's sort of unique just to the current COVID situation, okay? Because what you're having is a lot of these um, statements are being read out, they're recorded, okay? So they're not done live. I can't remember whether this one was live or not. And the problem is, you see, you have the president of the Human Rights Council, who at the moment is a, is a woman, um, but she has some vice presidents also that sometimes take over from her. Some of those are male, some of those are female. And, um, and because obviously the speakers... The, the organization doesn't know when they're going to come on. They just pre-recorded that and saying, okay, Madam President. They know the president is, is a female, so they go, Madam President. But it always looks a bit strange if they're saying Madam President and let's say that the guy at that moment on, in the podium is a male, the, the, one of the, the male vice presidents. So what I do is I just, I've just been leaving out Senor, Senora. I just say President, President or Chairperson. You, you can't go wrong, okay? Um, that's just a small thing that's very sort of apropos the COVID situation at the moment. So just I, ju I just leave out the gender and the, you just say president. That sort of covers covers all. Maybe you'll think, oh, that sounds cool. So yeah. Okay. Carrying on then. Okay, so here we go. Personas defensoras, human rights defenders. So as I say, it's really been at this meeting that I've started to hear this acronym a lot: HRDs. Uh, de manera preocupante. So all those three words can just be synthesized into worryingly. Um, it's never, you know, uh, you don't want to be in, in, a, in a troubling fashion. It's, it's too many words. You don't need to say that. You know, they've grown, the number of attacks have grown worryingly. Okay. Now, this is interesting. Okay. Uh, las acciones de inteligencia ilegal. Now, I have said here surveillance. 
okay, like basically spying on you. Have I taken a bit of a leap here? Maybe. The easy option would have been to say, I guess, intelligence, actions of illegal intelligence. Now, they're talking here about the action. This is why I've put surveillance. Okay, because usually when we talk about intelligence, we talk about the intelligence services, okay, the intelligence or authorities, whatever. It's used as a sort of adjective to describe, you know, the, uh, a specific entity. Whereas the actual action they carry out is generally surveillance, whatever it may be, you know, wiretapping, spying. Uh, you know, surveillance is very much the, the, the in word at the moment, illegal surveillance. You know, that's what, uh, uh, you know, in the U.S. Congress a few years ago, that's what the, uh, the heads of the CIA, the, you know, the CIA chief was being based. So surveillance seems to be very much the, the action, okay? So I think you could say either here, to be honest, intelligence or surveillance. Do I take a bit of a leap saying surveillance? Maybe uh, uh, the word they usually use for surveillance is vigilancia. So I, I don't know. I, I made a judgment call in that moment. I mean, I did actually do this uh, statement in the, I think, the meeting itself. I think I did go with surveillance. Um, yeah, again, it's one of those things you have to make your own judgment call. Okay. Uh, amenazas de muerte contra defensores. All I've said here is just, the st okay, I put activists with a star. And I said, as a one-word solution, activist sounds better than defender. So, yes, if you're just going to use one word, I think activist sounds more natural in English. You know, you can, I think if you just say defender by itself, it could sort of lead to slight um, confusion. Um, human rights defender, yes, but I think if you're just going to say one word, I think activist is, is better. Uh, okay. Next paragraph. So, yeah, whenever I hear a sentence starting entre, I tend to drop it because I pretty much am 99% certain that it's going to probably be an include uh, sentence phrase. Okay, so what you have here, the most vulnerable people include those. Okay, because otherwise, if you go among, among the most vulnerable individuals are... Um, Whatever the verb comes, you, 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 if you start with among, you're going to have to then invert the rest of the sentence. That verb is going to have to come in first, followed by nouns. I think it's just a, a safer bet when you hear sort of entre las personas, that to just go with the include, just to say the most vulnerable include. Uh, los, las que defienden los derechos. So rather than, I think better than defend rights, I think it's to protect rights. You really, with rights, you want to have those two words, you know, promote, protecting, promoting rights, those two Ps. So I think it's better to protect rights. In el contexto de implementación de mega proyectos. So here's just because if it's going fast, I mean, this implementation, I think, is a bit redundant. So you could probably drop it. That's why I put the round brackets there. Uh, like the uh, Indonesian lawyer, Golfrid Siregar, que fue encontrado muerto 2019. Again, so you, I mean, this again, you don't need this que fue, who was found. I mean, just, you know, Golfrid Siregar, found dead in 2019. Tras su lucha contra, after fighting, I think, su lucha contra, you can just, again, synthesize that into uh, just fighting a hydroelectric project. Uh, lamentamos la, la impunidad. It's always good to remember, you know, just to have that solution for lamentar. We regret. You can have bemoan as well. We bemoan, although it sounds a bit, it's almost too high a register. We, we bemoan. It's, it sounds like something straight up. Some, sounds like something out of a... A Dickens novel, almost, but yeah. So regret is the sort of standard formula there. Um, okay, so we regret the almost total. Oh, I was almost thinking for total, casi total, the almost blanket impunity, completely for everyone, as as a as an idea, just saying. Uh, f and then, not I think in English we would say for the killings, as opposed to the impunity of the killings. We would say impunity for the killings of, of human rights defenders. Uh, que em ampara en particular los autores intelectuales. Okay, so that shelters them, that impunity it shelters them, or gives them safe haven. I think shelter, that shelters, it's, that tends to be the best one for amparar. Uh, los autores intelectuales. So he meant, actually, this is mentioned, this phrase is used a couple of times in this text. So um, here I've given you two alternatives the mastermind or the orchestrators. Uh, so again, those are, you want to have the, at least you know, a, a couple of uh, alternatives to, 
to convey that notion? Because you obviously have, on the one hand, you've got the people that do the actual killings themselves, the actual sort of, what we would say in English, the sort of hatchet men, and you've got the guys who plan the killing, who don't actually carry out themselves. They're very much, let's say, the masterminds and the orchestrators. La todavía pendiente causa Berta Cáceres. This is a very famous sort of high-profile case in Latin America, the, the murder of Berta Cáceres. I mean, it's good just to know that name because it will, it will come up a lot if you're doing texts about uh, human rights cases in Latin America. That is an oft-cited case. And so todavía pendiente, still pending case, um, the outstanding, you could maybe also say the out, it's an outstanding case, uh, one or the other. Uh, la respuesta común de estos estados ante esta situación de violencia, again here, esta situación de, again, is a bit redundant, I think. You could, um, you know, un, if, if, if you were struggling here, I think you could just drop that situ that that those three words and just say uh, the, res the joint response of those states to uh, to this violence is so without the situation de uh, que se traduce en un aumento de so se traduce it leads to it results in uh, conflictividad socioambiental so uh, conflictivity I mean I guess it would be a, a calc or cognate, whatever in English. Sounds ugly, though. So I think a good word here is, is strife. Uh, I think that's the, the word we really want here in English. Um, okay, this is an important uh, phrase to know in English. Campañas de difamaciones. So, you know, in, in the press or wherever it happens to be, and, you know, when they particularly target an individual, you know, they really sort of dig out all the skeletons in his cupboard or whatever it may be. Uh, so they're called spear, smear campaigns to, you know, it's effect effectively slandering the person, trying to, trying to strip him of his credibility. So that's, that's a very much a set expression in English, a smear campaign. Que vulneran las personas defensoras. Here in the context, I think, you know, the idea is that they target those campaigns. They are targeting uh, the, the, the uh, HRDs as opposed to undermining them. I think here in English, the most sort of natural idea is that they're targeting them. Uh, okay, this preocupan la particular vulnerabilidad. This is a, uh, quite a frequent device you get in Spanish when they start off a sentence, just preocupa or preocupan, uh, without any subject. Um, you know, you, you just hear the verb first, and then we find out what the, uh, what the subject of the sentence is after. Uh, it can be a bit sort of disconcerting at times. So what I usually, when I hear that preocupan, I, I usually go for, so what's troubling is, or what's concerning is, I think that's, uh, um, in English, that's uh, a fairly legitimate way of starting that sort of a sentence like that. We do say that in English, you know, what's troubling me is this, that, and the other. So I, I think whenever I hear preocupan at the start of a sentence, preocupa, preocupan, I, I go with, now what's troubling is the particular vulnerability, etc., etc. Uh, lamentamos la eliminación del fideicomiso. Okay, so uh, I give. So you could say here the elimination, but the elimination of the trust fund. Um, I think a better word here is perhaps abolition. Okay, or the scra I mean, also the scrapping as well. I guess is a, a lower register scrapping ab abolition. I think uh, I, I looked that one up actually. After I was thinking, what is the mot juste here for when you have a trust fund? What do you do with it when you want to get rid of it, so you abolish it. And so, yes, Fideicomiso is a, a trust fund. And then there's a few things in this final pal paragraph. Again, another common f Spanish device, ur like a sentence starting, urge que, blah, blah, blah. So generally, I will, I will we, I will put the we in, we urge um, los estados de estos países. Okay, here, los estados de... I felt was very much redundant, uh, so drop that. So we urge just those countries, okay, to to implement. Now, perhaps another solution for urge que, you, instead of if you don't want to we, all right, then you would use the should. So, so you could maybe just say then, okay, those countries should implement uh, prevention measures. Then I give you here the one, two, three, four. Uh, so this is, you know, it's a comprehensive prevention and protection 
measures, comprehensive prevention and protection measures. Now, what happens here, for example, if you hear medidas de prevención y protección, and you think that, oh, that's the end, that, that's, that's the end of it, okay? So you say, like, uh, okay, protection and prevent, uh, prevention and protection measures, but then you hear that integral. As you're saying all that, you hear the integral through your mic, you think, oh, bugger it. There's that, there, was another, there was another adjective hanging over. Well, what I would do is, for example, I would say to implement protection, prevention measures, comprehensive measures. So rather than repeat the whole thing, I would just take the noun, the measures, and then, you know, it sounds like you're just giving it added weight. It doesn't sound like you've made a mistake, that you've gone too early. It just sounds that you're, added, you're sort of adding emphasis. So I, I would say uh, uh, implementing prevention and protection measures, comprehensive measures, with a et cetera, et cetera. Uh, enfoque diferencial, a differentiated approach. That would be the, uh, the, the phrase you're after there for diferencial. Lleven uh, a juicio. So again, the most straightforward solution here is just to prosecute. Um, you know, launch legal proceedings against, take to court. I think prosecute is by far the pithiest solution uh, here. And who are they prosecuting? Okay, so here we come again. The autores materiales e intellectuales. So autores materiales are the ones, are the guys that actually do the killing. Um, now, I said earlier on, I said the word I used was hatchet man, okay? That's a bit of a colloquialism perhaps so i think the official you know the sort of high register solution for autores materials just is the perpetrators so they're the guys that, that actually uh, do the killing and again las autores intelectuales i've just sort of repeated here uh orchestrators again or or masterminds uh agresiones contra so again this is an expression they use quite a bit agresiones contra activistas or def def defensores so i think attacks um, is better than aggression we don't know it's we commit aggressions against doesn't sound right in english okay so yeah a bit of a grim text that one but uh still very useful some very useful vocabulary uh, to be found there uh, i hope you found it useful uh, if you did, uh, as usual, please uh, please do press the thumbs up button. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, uh, please do subscribe. Remember to follow me on the uh, the LinkedIn group. That's what I run parallel to this channel. Keep following my uh, Italian buddy Sara Molinari. If you guys are doing uh, Italian, she's got some great work that she posts up on the LinkedIn where for translations uh, into Italian. And that's pretty much it for today. So episode 37 of the Interpretation Station is adjourned. <laughs>